Okie dokie, we getting into a best of three, PVT. And my cat has decided now is a good time as any to uh, come on my desk and push my mic and sit on my mouse. As he do. Bottom left of data C, it is Mana. Top right, it is Hero Marine. You might think, why don't you spend time with your cat? Why would he be so needy? Do you not pay attention other times? That is absolutely not true. He gets all the attention in the world. Oh, he's so cute, though. So, as I was saying during the break, waiting for this lobby to actually go up, Mana is a very fun player. I think he can be very good, but I think for his absolute peak, he does not reach it very often, so... I think at his peak, micro, macro, decision making, mechanics, go. <laughs> he's uh, he's actually among the best. You know, we witnessed that occasionally, a little Mana Super Saiyan tournament run, you know? But not super consistently. I think that overall he has hit a new uh, level, but once again, you know, he bumped that level up. You still stay mostly around that level. Very few peaks, uh, and unfortunately, a few more valleys than he would really be hoping for. His most recent European regional run not ending as he would like. And he uh, was also particularly crushed by it because it was a group of, you know, almosts. He, he almost won a couple of series against very good players and just you know, self-admittedly in tweets said that he kind of threw them at the last second, let his nerves get to him in the third games. But I still think that he has the potential to always make it out of groups, make it into the bracket, do a deep bracket run. I think he has the potential to defeat someone like Hero Marine. The level that he hits consistently does not match the level that Hero Marine hits consistently, especially in this matchup, which he seems to do particularly well, and that might be one of the reasons that he does particularly well in these open cups. There's a lot of Protoss. Happens. Every so often, Hero Marine throws a... A dud. You know, we, we think, okay, he's fantastic in this matchup. No way he's going to lose to this guy, whoever it is. And then he just like, loses 0-2, and you're like, eh? Eh? <laughs> but it's not that often. It is not that often. So I think his confidence should be pretty high leading into the series. Mana did get a cheeky scout into the main base. Kept his probe over to the left side. And that could have either bothered the SCV a bit earlier... Or it could have gone into the main base to see what his opponent was doing. So chooses to go into the main base. Sees that it is going to be a 1-1 one, one question. Most likely a 1-1-1, one, 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 of course. And then the starport is on the way. And it can uh, kind of look like, was it really all that worth to get the probe in? Because he's going Stargate. He's going to get a pretty fast follow-up scout. I would say it still is. Gives you a lot of notice as to what to expect, where to expect things as well. For instance, if you think there's going to be a wood of mine, maybe you play around it a little bit more than if it was obviously like a three racks, right? But I also thought that that would also have told him or given him confidence, I suppose, to actually wait for the Phoenix. I guess, actually, what is happening? Okay. So I thought the Adepts are going to pair up with the Phoenix. But what is happening is that he's stopping Hero Marine from actually knowing what he's doing. So by the probe entering into the main base, that one first Phoenix didn't have to go across the map to scout. And with Hero Marine having to stay at home due to all the pressure from the Adepts, it did mean this Phoenix play was a big surprise. Henleans trying to buy time, dart around, live for something a little bit later on, all unsuccessful. I would have been a little scared of the Terran using that as an excuse to try and just send a medevac over to the left side. But even if the medevac contained uh, a cyclone or even more Hellions, Phoenix could arrive back at home pretty quickly and take care of that. And we actually had here Marines still get the medevac, just not use it to attack across the map. Trying to get that great anti-Phoenix defense. Good control from here Marine to save the injured cyclone, the very injured Viking. And uh, nothing else, actually. Nothing else died. So <laughs> it was a great save on Hero Marine's part. Mana thought he had found a bit of an avenue, despite the knowledge of Phoenix existing for a little while before he actually came across the map. 
Those Hellions did buy a decent amount of time, <clears throat> after all. But he uh, was uh, incorrect. There was actually no even sliver of weakness from here, Marine, on the defense. Although he had a later than usual notice of Phoenix. I think the fact that he was already going into a Cyclone to do what looks like a pair up on the Cyclone Medivac drop push thing that he does on this map uh, actually made it work quite well against the Phoenix opener, undetected or not. And this is the map that Kier Marine loves to do this type of push on, which I think is doing wonderfully against the Phoenix opener. Last second trade out of all the units, but oh, another Phoenix rallying forward and getting denied. Yeah, confirm with that scan. Oh, barely lives, but like how much is it really going to help? I think Mana has already misplayed this a bit too much. I absolutely can see how a Stargate would have worked out against this build. Again, a build that Hiramari does a lot on this map. But it did not work out yet again here. Because I, I feel like I've seen a lot more Protoss fail against this build from Hiramari than actually win against it. Maybe I'm overplaying how often Hiramari does it on this map. So there is still a little bit of that surprise factor for the Protoss. Maybe it is one of those builds where, uh, you know... <laughs> A lot of Protoss still have trouble with it. You know, they know it's coming. They technically might even know how to handle it, but then something always goes wrong in the actual execution. That's just can sometimes happen with StarCraft builds. Uh, that looked like it had an upgrade. So I had to check, double check. No, Cyclones are not upgraded. Finally, most of them go down to some Stalker Micro, but as I was saying, Mana's already taken so much damage, guys. Losing all those Phoenix was really painful. Now about to lose the Warp Prism, the last shot of the Cyclone does it. And here, Marine uh, is forced to evacuate. He's not going to be able to continue pressuring this third base. He doesn't really have to either. Oh! Well, here, Marine does like to experiment a little bit more in these open cups. We have mech on the way, guys. We have mech from here, Marine. I think this is only something you would find him doing in the open cups. Mana is actually also doing something a little bit weird. He went for a second Stargate. He's going to go Phoenix Colossus, uh, but like really a lot of Phoenix, which is kind of an interesting choice. Uh, when you consider that he already lost so many. Six Phoenix have died. I guess technically overall the tree doesn't look that bad. Actually quite even. Gas minerals really evening out between each other. But especially if this was bio, I'd still put Hero Marine way favored. Just because the worker count's been even or above for the Terran. Which is fantastic when you account for mules, so on and so forth, right? So I, I, and even with mech, I still think that Hero Marine's in the better position. But overall, I guess it's not as bad as it might have seemed. Eventually, all of the Terran army was also cleaned up, I guess. Uh, <laughs> I just, it's just a whole new world when you're talking about mech. Here, Marine also uh, kind of having to go for a faster fourth command center just with the limited amount of gas that you can get while going for all of those high gas units, the Cyclones and the Vikings, and then not having all six gas guys up, right? He's only on four. So... You have mineral surplus. Put them into a command center, because what else are you going to do? Uh, usually, the toughest part about getting into a mech game versus Protoss is actually getting this third base up. Then if you get the third base up, you get a little Sim City. You're probably okay to get to a fourth, but then new problems arise, which we might get into. But the fourth base is coming down almost simultaneously. It's almost a double expand from the Terran, which is just not really supposed to be allowed to happen from the Protoss' perspective. This is supposed to be more of a struggle. If it's not, hey, sometimes that happens, especially because, you know, a lot of mech players, a lot of the reason that mech builds work is that they do early game damage. They get something done in the early game. Some cheeky Hellions, some cheeky cloaked widow mines, uh, or what we had happen here. So you're like, okay, the third base, I couldn't stop. You know, that, that happens. But to have the fourth base already at planetary, it just, it kind of sucks. You kind of hope to get a little more of your, your ducks in a row so you can at least start to pressure a fourth command center. Maybe you get the, the Blink Stalker count up. Maybe your charge finishes or something like that. Both things that can still really throw a wrench into a budding mech player. But you can't. Fourth is already done. You try and be aggressive at this point. You really don't have the materials necessary. I mean, imagine trying to be aggressive with this army into tank fire in a planetary. It's not going to happen. There's no outmaneuvering the Terran player either. Your army's just about as slow as theirs. So this is going to be one of those rare mech wins, in my opinion. This is what I'm seeing. I'm just saying what I'm seeing. 
So Mana knew about the mech. Uh, I think I scouted the uh, counterattack. He saw the two factories. I'm not exactly sure when he saw the two factories, to be fair, but he's known about it for a while. Again, just didn't have the capacity to actually do anything about it, so he's choosing to go just Supreme Macro, which is, you know, the only thing you really can do, because again, we weren't lined up to go for an attack. So we might as well try and be a bit greedier and line up for a later attack. So hopefully that works out. But what Mana might not know about, and this is the really important thing, is that it's not continued factory mech. It's going to go into battle cruisers. That is a real bummer. You think you've got some handle on the game, and then they throw you 10 battle cruisers into your natural. It's a very different way of playing. Literally, composition-wise, but also placement-wise, aggression-wise. It's very different between facing a ground mech Protoss, a uh, Terran, sorry, and a Battlecruiser Terran. So Mana, especially because this is so rare, you know, he might not be thinking about it now, but it might be on his mind. Is he actually going to be able to do anything to kind of stop it? I don't think so. Uh, this is, I believe, the second or third scan from here, Marine. Really wants to see if there are air units on the way. And maybe even where they're coming from. He might be thinking of doing some type of, of teleport in, but that's always risky to do. You almost never want to teleport in this late into the game. You want to always be available for the teleport out. Gotta say, between the two, I did not expect this type of game. <laughs> Mana's usually kind of aggressive here. Marina will obviously doesn't play mech a lot. Uh... But we are getting into one of the latest game compositions you can in the matchup. Battle Cruisers versus Tempest Carrier. So we can skip forward to just talking about Battle Cruiser Dynamics versus Protoss, I guess, because clearly we're heading there. Clearly, we're going to have a lot of Protoss. We're going to have a lot of Terran. They're going to take all the bases on the map. They're going to split the map, probably. And we got to talk about how the actual compositions go up against each other. So here we go. All right, trying to push my bias aside. So pushing my bias aside, um, I do believe, like, factually, like what I witness pros do, <laughs> not what I'm doing or up against, uh, I do believe battle cruisers, mass battle cruisers, we're talking about like 12 to 15 Yamato and upgrades, are the best unit composition. Just very difficult to get there. It's very difficult to get there on even footing. It's very difficult to get there even like when you're a little bit behind, obviously, it's difficult to get there. Even if you're a little bit ahead in the game, like your Marine was, is, I don't know. Um, yeah, uh, it's still difficult to get to the appropriate number of battle cruisers with the appropriate number of, of well, the appropriate economy for it as well. Because you are going to trade as much as battle cruisers are designed nowadays to basically not trade. You got to teleport out, right? You almost always are, so you can't be playing a game where get to 16 battle cruisers and say, yep, that's it, GG, you got an A move now. Like, it's not that easy. But, uh... Yeah. I see this, I see this going well for the Terran player. Oh, the planetary didn't even die! <laughs> oh my god. Oh, the recall was a bit haphazard as well. Obviously late, and not all the units. Ay, 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 ay. Hmm. Well, that actually might be it. <laughs> so what? What? I didn't even really get to discuss like the whole. I, I I thought I had more time to really discuss the intricacies of these this late game. Uh, what happened there was that Mana actually wasn't on a completely anti battle cruiser army. So he moved in uh, with some hopes of probably finding his opponent out of position, still on few, too few battle cruisers to really contribute to the fight. And, and that can work sometimes. You know, if only two battle cruisers warped in to help the fan, I don't think it's actually very good for a hero marine at all. But instead, it was a good number of battle cruisers with Yamato, obviously. And the number of battle cruiser wrecking units was not particularly high. From mana so he just he just lost a lot of expensive units that i mean granted he's not going to use like those colossus but still you don't want to lose it in such a fashion because he also didn't get the economy <laughs> he didn't kill the planetary uh now we have more battle cruiser killing units but still not enough 
You also want to be using their range about as long as possible, right, before you actually have to engage the battle cruisers. And uh, didn't really get to a whole lot of time to do that. Tanks were taken care of thanks to some of that leftover ground armies, but many of the tanks still shot at the stalkers. So many of the stalkers still died. A couple of last shots on some of these battle cruisers will successfully kill two or three that, you know, might have otherwise teleported, repaired, and come back into the fray. Eight battle cruisers in total killed is actually quite nice. But does Mana have enough economy to say, like, okay, that's it, I guess I've done it? No, he doesn't. Here, Marine, also still on, you know, six bases, extra orbitals. He's landing Vikings to help against the Stalkers, love it. Uh, finish up 2-2 at some point during that as well, which was missing for some of the initial battles. And is still producing four battle cruisers at a time. So that's pretty terrifying. Mana, had he had, had he still had this base and this base with Rich Vest being Geyser, 85 probes, I think might have been okay with that trade. Maybe. It still is like, it, it more like is a reset than a real win, I think, even if he had those bases. But he didn't, so I'm going to say that 100% it was just a win for Hero Marine, who at the end of the day still has the more microable unit. So has the unit that theoretically will not die, can be repaired for, you know, a decent sum of money, but repairs better than remaking. So, I guess what I'm saying is, Mono might as well GG. <laughs> he's, he's actually playing the kind of, uh, you know, when you see those TVTs where one guy has Mass Raven, Liberator, Viking, and the other guy's running around with Marines. It's kind of playing like that game where, where there's some potential in the Marine character. You know, maybe they do find some of the units flying across the map. Maybe they cause some weird weird base trades, I guess. Uh, whatever. But battle cruisers are even better than the Raven, Liberator, Viking scenario I just pictured and tanks, I suppose, too. Battle cruisers are better than all that because they can deal with base trades with teleport. And even if they, in error, you know, run across the map over Stalkers or Tempests, uh, again, Teleport is still there. 20 Marines firing on Ravens and Vikings and stuff running over them. Like, almost everything dies if they don't pay attention immediately. Not the, not the case for Powder Cruisers. And now we have some additional units to talk about as well. I didn't really notice how many Widow Mines are being built, but that's... Not only does it kill a decent amount of units, like one shots, decent amount of units, it also is just really frustrating for the Protoss to play around, no matter what unit they're doing. Carriers sometimes are fine against Widow Mines, because they imagine some carriers with their interceptors out. Maybe the Widow Mines even friendly fire. But otherwise, they're just something you have to play around. It's very intimidating. With 50 supply lead, 60 actually in army. Here, Marine is going to take game number one. Again, not a game I expected to play, cast, <laughs> to be played by those people. Mules are going to win this? I don't think it had anything to do with mules, really. Well, obviously, some part of the game has to do with mules because it's a mechanic in StarCraft. But... <clears throat> Does repair cost minerals and gas or just minerals? It depends on what's being repaired. It takes a portion of whatever the cost of building it was. So if it's a factory, it costs a little bit of gas. If it's a barracks, only costs minerals. Top right, Mana. Bottom left, Hero Marine, who followed up a 1-0 victory against Radita with two racks. Now follows up the 1-0 victory Recent against Mana received. with the proxy racks. Apparently you are doing something right, Captain. Thank you, the real Ninja Turtle for the 28 month resub. I said Proxy Rax actually might just be an Engineer Bay block at this point. Um, I think it was supposed to be a Proxy Rax. Uh, no, he's still gonna do it, okay. But I, I was saying, the probe saw the SCV. He might change his mind based off of that. But what if he thinks 
the mana thinks, but he thinks. No, I'm, just, I'm not gonna go down that path. Uh, <laughs> mana. They, 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 as pros, they really should have both seen each other. Uh, so that, that, I really don't think we're gonna doubt that. I really don't think we're like, well, what if they didn't see each other? I, let's just go ahead and say they both saw each other. I like Mana's plan currently a lot more. Which is, I believe, he is saying, I know what you're doing. I'm not blind. I don't care, basically. I'm gonna build a shield battery in my main. And then I'm gonna attack you whose factory is only going to be building. Now, the factory is the perfect defensive unit. Uh, structure, structure, sorry. That produces great defensive units. But if it's not done... Eh. So, here, Marine needs to consider this. Since he was seen, why didn't a probe go in and, and check and try to deny the barracks? But I gotta say, the sandbox score wasn't as fast as I thought it was, and the shield battery certainly wasn't as fast as I thought it was, so... And not that four probes is gonna stop Mana from still being able to produce two ga two units from two gateways, but... It's already more damage than I gave credit to Hero Marine for doing. I don't know. I don't know. I actually, I don't know how this is gonna go. So, yeah, the Terran conundrum is that they, they figure it out, right? At some point, I don't know how fast, but Hero Marine is like, oh, he's probably proxy getting me. And now knows for sure. The conundrum is that you can't lift your factory. And you got spawned on the side of the map, so you can't just place your tech lab down. Even if you could, if you spawned over here, the tech lab could be focus fired and killed. And it, it just is all that extra time as well. To build a tech lab and then actually get into a cyclone or a tank. So you kind of have to go into a Widow Mine. But a Widow Mine's one one shot wonder. It, it deals one shot, then it dies. So you basically have to wait for two to kind of cover each other. And if you mess up the micro, you could still be screwed. So this is a uh, this is the conundrum. Nice micro and counter micro and then counter micro. Counter counter micro. This probe actually being secret MVP is gonna die to a grenade. <laughs> oh, and a misfire on the widow mine, I believe. Not that I think three stalkers would have killed it, but I think he was trying to target it, but it was in that just perfect location. Now gonna sacrifice the stalker, but I think that is worthwhile. Ah, oh, that was right. Three stalkers wouldn't have killed it. That is a bummer. And the micro continues, but now, now that we say that Hero Marine has held, now I don't like Mana's decision, right? I think there's a lot of potential in it. But now that Hero Marine has effectively held... Has he though? Uh, I, I mean, Mana, yeah, he's one basing, which he kind of has to do. Because I was going to say, if he tries to expand now, he's probably screwed. So he's just not going to try to expand. He's going to just one base. He got a Robo, he's baking a War Prism. This game's not over yet. These last second repairs on the Supply Depot, by the way, have been pretty clutch. Viking is a great decision. It produces off of a add-on list starport, so it was one of the fastest things that you can produce, but also actually helpful, because the medevac wouldn't be. <laughs> a liberator could also theoretically help, but wouldn't be maneuverable just in case things go really south. So, yeah, if it had siege up on the ramp, it probably would have been the line in the sand. It wouldn't have helped anywhere else, so if the guy's gonna bust you before the liberator's out, or if they're gonna get a war prism, the liberator's not gonna help too much. So the Viking also now has the option of lifting, although... Yeah, it's probably just best to keep it on ground. That is a lot of stalkers. Successfully getting a warp in. Gonna have attempts at microing Vikings. It's not usually something you see every day. SCVs have to be pulled. Stalkers are particularly great against SCVs. And if they're body blocked... Oh, good save on the stalker. This is absolutely where Mana, I think, feels strongest when he's microing with a warprism. But, oh, he gets the last shot on the Viking as well. I was gonna say, Hero Marine's micro has also been pretty on point. Tank pops out, big daddy tank. Usually saves the day against a bunch of stalkers, but it's gonna cover only a portion of that mineral line. And Hero Marine is strapped for cash. In fact, so much so that he's gonna not be able to repair soon enough. 
Oh, the tank's gonna go down. Oh, it's gonna get one shot, and that is actually it. The Viking! No! Oh, love tap the war prism. Nicely done. Takes it down. That's no more micro on the stalkers, and of course, no more reinforcements. But the SCV is still gonna go down. There's four stalkers, one shot SCVs, and that is actually it. Mana does, in fact, take game number two. Some wacky, wackadoodle PVT. I guess I have to go back to liking Mana's choice then to do the proxy. Really, I think just dedicating to the one base. If this had been some weird attempt to try and mac her out, which I feel like we've seen Protoss do before, where they're like, that's what I have to do, right? I think he's just dead. But going for the Robo, going for the War Prism. Gave him the most potential, and he used it. He micro good. And they both went to 120, 120 supply, and I wonder one game minerals. So Mule's gonna win this. I still don't think that was Mule's. I mean, I get you saying. It's a kind of you know moot point to to argue about it. It's not even really arguing. But I think because here Marine I still had like six bases up and running. Let's just say that the mules are even taken out of the equation. I still think that uh Five command centers, 65 SCVs versus five Nexus, 65 probes, but one's building battle cruisers and one's building stalkers. Yeah, just so uh, looks better for the there. That was game one. Game two, a little bit of a cheese fest. Works out well for Mana. Now we get into the final game. Top left Mana, bottom right here, Marine. Air Marine, maybe a little bit on the nose, going for that kind of one-two punch, best of wise. First the <laughs> supreme macro game, and the next uh, pretty pretty cheesy. Although uh, Rax proxies, it's kind of meh on the cheese. You know, it's not that's not the biggest of deals. Would have been a lot cheesier if you planned on also proxying the factory, which would have killed him actually if he had proxied the factory. He would be dead much faster because he did eventually lose. But, uh, yeah, no, no. Still. It's kind of what he showed versus Radata. Uh, I absolutely remember him doing the same type of, again, first macro, then micro. Against many others in this Open Cup. It might be something that opponents are picking up on, but nonetheless still have trouble against. So this time around, Mana is not going to send a super early probe right across the map. Actually, quite a late probe scout for a Protoss in this matchup. Especially one that I would say is very micro-centric like Mana, who, I don't know, I would 100% say is looking to even go for a super early probe scout just to be as bothersome as possible. Not this time. Not this game. What he does do is scouts for proxies very thoroughly as well. The back base and this base, and then even off to the right side, up in the high ground. Could turn it into his own proxy at some point, but this also is going to make it so that it's a late probe scout, so the Reaper will already be across the map, and then if they're not getting a Marine afterwards, you could maybe even harass the SCV. We're getting to the main base, which Mono was able to do in the first game. In this case, it's not a one Rex expand, so there is going to be a second unit. Uh, absolutely. Reaper's going to come out. Probe says, oh, well, I guess I, I get to see that. And had it been earlier, it also would have seen that. But now it really knows everything it needs to know. There's no proxies. The command center's on the way. The factory didn't swap over. Although that could still happen. It isn't. And Mana's follow-up scout with the Stargate will eventually come into effect. For Mana, going for that low-ground pylon, it's gonna kind of regret that a little bit. Nothing you can do about it, though. This is where maybe, had he gone for an earlier probe scout, he would not have put the pylon on the front lines, just knowing that he'd have so few units to actually protect it. That extra, that extra step for the Reapers to go into the main base skill pylon might have, might have kept it alive, although it looks like it's going to live anyways. Two Adepts just barely enough. 
into the main we go with two very weakened units. Gonna try and chase after the Reaper, grab that one. Other uh, Adept pops out, perfectly timed. Mana actually doing that like a magician. I thought he made the wrong choice going for the Reaper, but it was because he knew that the other Adept was gonna pop out, so just kudos on that. Not uh, uncommon at all to go into Adepts and more Adepts, right, with the Stargate opener, but just the timing of it was really cool. Still is going to lose five probes, of course get fully scouted, and did lose an Adept. I feel like his Warp Gate was also late. It's kind of surprising to have four gateway units come out before Warp Gate, much less five. Not 100% sure about that, but the Pylon Resistance lived, received. and uh, the game goes on. Here, Marine right, did Captain. dedicate, you know, quite a few units in the early game off a of limited economy. So it's always something to consider in exchange for those probe kills, but I'd say it was worth it for here, Marine. Well, not if he loses his own SCVs. Beowulf, thank you for the 13 months. Jersey number. Oh, that's not a wall. <gasps> that's extremely punishing. Oh my god, guys. I think I think Mana might win this best of three. Yo. It's one of those things where it's like, well, I probably won't be able to abuse that. It's fine. And then, whoops, that actually. Actually, a Hero Marine puts the reactor on probably while microing, which is part of the reason that it was mistake messed up. He also probably knew that he there's a high chance he would have been punished. He probably did that, made the mistake, said, okay, I need to do this as fast as possible anyways, and thought, Oh my god, the Adepts can go across the map and probably kill me. He probably knew that was a factor. Could be giving him too much credit. He might have just completely missed that that was not a wall. <laughs> Happens to the best of us. Uh, Hero Marine, still only down five workers, doesn't look all that bad. But keep in mind, Mana's third Nexus is done. And Hero Marine has yet to start any of his additional production. Uh, well, second barracks is done, but stim, combat shields, upgrades, not done. Two oracles fly back into the main bases. They're not necessary back at home. And Mana is having one hell of a game. I'm here, Marine, uh, mixing things up, trying to get a little more aggressive in the early game. Backfiring now twice. And that that's enough to actually lose in the series. When I mean, it's a best of three, that's how that works. 12 more SCVs die. Oracle still lives, which is great to have at least one Oracle, right? And then a total of 22 worker lead for Mana. Who also doesn't have a lot of production or a lot of technology, to be fair. So we're going to have this point where here Marine knows he's pretty screwed. So he's going to try and do a combat shield all in on a short rush distance, which makes a lot of sense. Mana has yet to have anything really that important. So this is the only time here Marine has to win this game. Because Mana did invest into a third Nexus and did invest into a lot more probes and doesn't have anything extremely useful. These force fields definitely very useful to buy some time, but the quick hopscotch over the force fields of the medevac and both cyclones surviving is kind of ruining Mana's idea to buy time. The attack is still here. Phoenix picks up the one siege tank, which is kind of helpful, but probes have to be pulled, desperately bringing a zealot into the mix. An Immortal will pop out eventually as well, but that just feels like it's so far away, and Hero Marine strikes back. That actually might be it. The Pylon, injured from earlier, dies before the Immortal pops out. All of this happening just seconds prior to all the gateways finishing. One Artosis Pylon for each set of gateways. Another probe pool is going to have to happen, and at the very least, this will equalize the game. If not a straight-up win here, Marine, the game, and I think that's what's going to be here. Happening now. Tanks well protected by the amount of Marines. Not enough units from the Protoss to stop this. Charge is going to finish, but Mana needs more. He needs another round of Zealots, which he cannot afford. I think he might just cancel the Immortal and maybe whatever else that he possibly could, but now the Pylon has been destroyed. Three gateways is all that's left here, so maybe, you know, three more Zealots, then he's forced to pull the trigger. While here, Marine still rallies forth. So even, even then, it's not going to be enough. If this was literally the only army on the field, maybe Mana had a chance. But another tank, handful more Marines, couple of SCVs. Mana was so, so close to winning this game. GG. Oh, hindsight 2020. Should have stopped building probes and gotten those gateways faster. It would be really hard to tell exactly when they were supposed to do that.
Perhaps also bringing back the stasis, uh, the Oracle for a stasis trap. Even if we assume it would have been scanned and, and not been a part of the fight, even that time taken could have been big. It's heartbreaking for Mana. At least it's not a <laughs> championship finals, you know. Does get knocked out in the quarterfinal. Here, Marine waits for the winner of Shadone versus Rainer. Max Pax waits for the winner of Clem versus Braddock. Braddock's up down Geralt. It's a good result for Braddock. Uh, 